your last name? Ryan. My name is Ryan. I'm 27 years old, and I'm from Kentucky. I joined the US Army, specifically the Army Reserves, at 19 as uh, active duty. Got good training, learned a lot about uh, being a medic. Overall, I'm a very logical, rational, uh, systematic person. I'm always thinking about uh, things that most people couldn't wrap their mind around, even if they tried to. I'm feeling um, there's a little bit of uh, anticipation, mostly for what I don't know yet. There are people weaker than me, mentally and physically, who've made it, and uh, I will, uh, I'll prevail as well. It'll be interesting to see uh, how much of myself uh, truly changes, rather than um, the image that I'm putting on. Any of the typical rules of society, um, none of those exist in there. They're all gone, and you live by the new rules. And those are the rules that I have no idea about, and I'm going to have to learn. What I don't understand is how the one hour of our making fake checks. You just got out of the military. You're not drawing any money from the military. And you don't draw no monthly employment from the military. They questioned me rapidly, like, who's this, where's that, where's this other thing? I've kind of been there, so prove to me. And I was just like having to fire off a bunch of stuff. Uh, he's intelligent, but he's awful, awful arrogant. So you was in the military for eight years, and you got all these degrees, but you don't make enough money to where you don't have to steal from the, the bank. Right. I think lying about something. He's a model citizen. Like that, like when they come to jail, they get spit out. You better watch him, boy. He's got wires. I'm worried about Ryan blowing his cover. Once inmates are suspect you as a plant, it's almost impossible to shake that suspicion. They're going to be watching you all the time. I'm not getting a lot of intel. And then Garza comes along and says, hey, do you want a room? And it changes everything. And uh, he was like, yeah, we just wanted you to kind of move up. You seem like a very smart, calm guy. And uh, you know, that's kind of what we want. And I was like, this is a good opportunity. Yes, I'll be up. Typically, inmates wouldn't invite a first-time inmate into their cell. I don't think Ryan should trust Garza. Ryan definitely needs to watch his back. I mean, I don't even think I can do this for one second. Try it. No, well, no, I don't think so. Come on, bro. My overall experience with my bunkmates was that they are uh, the most seemingly stable people in the entire pod, and I kind of lucked out. But there are also troublemakers the more conflict-driven people. Check you out, man. Yeah, 
I'm a medic in the Army, but I've never seen a broken hand that bad in my life. I saw the knuckle was literally missing, and it was here. Mike, Yeah, it's broken. And I tell him, you need to go to a hospital, but if you don't want to, and you don't want to go to the guards, and you don't want anything to be known, I can do what I can do. And he says, it, let's go. Open your hand up all the way. Side, I give you seven. <sighs> good, you're good. Just do that. I ain't trying to say it. Oh. Look at this, bro. Bro, oh my god. I ain't never seen We start trying to reset his hand, and it was pretty grimy. But the knuckle was way back here, and I helped guide that in. I got some ad bill down here. It's sick, man. It's one thing to have inmates respect you, but if you earn that respect by doing them a favor, it's only a matter of time before they ask for another. They're telling me basically everything now. I can tell the sheriff everything he needs to fix the jail already. That's awfully confident of you that you think you have everything figured out. It's not hard. I know the nurse calls, the way they run their med calls. Does it take three months to smuggle a drug in? Small things like that. I've literally just absorbed it all. The sheriff and Captain Maples probably know this place better than any of the rest of us. Um, I tend to disagree. The sheriff doesn't actually see anything unless he watches film and then he doesn't even get the proper context. I do. Who are you loyal to? I'm loyal to anybody who's loyal to me, period. Hey, you lazy kids, get the up here. Court's in session. I believe the, the terminology they use is kangaroo court. Anyone higher up can accuse someone. To put it simply, it's a tribunal of criminals. There's a guy named Mingus in the pod. He's quiet, he seems like a good guy, but he bummed way too much of an e-cig thinking that he was just gonna get away with it. Y'all doing fast, they tell each one so they hurt. Uh, what? Ooh. F, you hear that? Hey, you gotta screw that part so you can get a better whip. Oh, you gotta come in. I wonder what you gonna look like after this. Cause this has been way more than 20. You gotta go to court for your victim. For what? Well, what's it for? Where's the sun that's gonna be your court? Lockdown. Lockdown. stumbling and the stumble that he had was not like his legs were hurting it was a head injury style uh, stumble what happened man come out here Dying, so I don't I know get it was an assault it was atrocious that was vicious it shouldn't have happened everybody go to your sign cell now to your bunk be in your bunk the kangaroo court thing was eye-opening in a lot of ways because it reinforced the fact that the inmates run this They were effective. I like the CERT team. They're very good at their jobs. Anyone looks in the direction to see what's going on? Face away. They put him in check to like, look away or you will regret it. Turn your head and look the other way. It's not your dog and pony show. They mean business. And I knew that when they take Daffron out, it's going to change everything. He's one of the heavy hitters in the pod. Go ahead. What were the inmates telling you about smuggling drugs into jail? Um, I don't want to give too much because I know you guys have cameras. I just don't know how much you're actually going to show. Yeah, 
there's all sorts of clothes. Yeah. We've cleaned out the properties of the place. I've got one of my cell phones I found. Uh, I mean, so you can just call it a ride, get six feet all set up. Yeah. There's a room that's access to outside. I'm kind of at a conflict here. I know that you guys have a job to do, but I also kind of have an honor code myself. Who are you loyal to? Bunkies come first. Ryan's acting like an inmate, even with the film crew. It concerns me that he's going rogue on us, and he's siding with the inmates over the program. I'm, I'm starting to worry a little bit for your safety, to be honest with you. I okay. know you're in a room with uh, Garza. Yeah. I don't want you to think that, you know, Garza's your, your friend. I, I can also gauge things fairly well for myself. I don't feel like it's my, um, my liberty, my liberty to actually just start talking, spilling everything. If you gotta keep in mind, you're still in here on a program. Yeah, but um, I do still have an honor code. What's this honor code? So there's a code that kind of uh, permeates into my known friendships. I have to keep some people close while I am here. That's fine when you're in there, but we feel like when you come here, they're pulling out inmates that are real inmates. Yeah. So they're getting the inmate yeah. of what really didn't happen. I'm kind of getting a vibe that you're getting a little bit too inmate uh, Maybe you're not thinking about the program as much as, as we would like for you to. You're not an inmate. OK. You're a person. All right. That's not an inmate. Ryan's always acted overconfident, but what he doesn't get is getting too close to inmates could backfire on him. If the inmates figure out he's a plant, he could be in serious danger. Because, uh, you know, if I'm seeing stuff that I feel like you, maybe something behind you, you feel like these, you're close to these inmates and they're actually scheming behind you. You know, if, if I feel like your safety's in jeopardy, I will pull you out. They told me, be an inmate. And now they're like, don't be an inmate. All right. Yeah. All right. You can't get all the good information in jail by sitting around and watching. I'm a field agent in here. That's what I am. I'm not just some bird watcher. Ryan. Yes. Back out stuff. The sheriff, I think he just wants to throw me out. I think he thinks I'm getting too comfortable. After Captain Maples talked to Ryan, I wanted to get him out of D Pod. <laughs> get him away from Garza and the inmates that he's too close to and get refocused on the program. When I was moved to C Pod, that was a reality check. I don't want to risk playing the game, getting involved in the real systems that they have that could land me in jail in reality. Now I'm having to say as little as possible and observe everything. D-Pod, you could tell that there were a lot of uh, thugs, you know, gangsters. And um, when you walk into, you know, C-Pod, it's not like that. It, there are so many other people, and they're all always right up on you. So it's way more of a community, but way more overbearing. Hey, man, it stinks like it's a turd on the floor right there. I felt like I had herpes of the olfactory system of some sort. I don't know what the f that is. I've, I've never seen that before. Worms. What the f is a f worm? named Jeremy he is complaining of, of pain. He had described having blood come out in his stool and throwing out blood. Ryan, he said that he'd been a medic. I said, well, he used to be a medic. Why don't you see what's wrong? I'm a medic in the Army, and they teach you, you know, some rudimentary stuff with the living creatures and fecal matter in the water. <laughs> it was a very real possibility that any of us or all of us could have gotten something that could make us sick. He starts pointing to the lower right quadrant of his stomach. Press down. Uh, Let it go. Uh, Let it hurt, yeah. There's only one real organ there besides, you know, intestine, and, and it's the appendix. Hey, you got appendicitis, man. Why are you guys We need somebody now, like Why? now. He most likely has appendicitis. He has rebound pain. Are you a doctor? Huh? Your doctor? I'm a medic in the army. 
It doesn't matter if I'm a janitor. If someone's throwing up blood, get him the out of here. You can die from appendicitis. To know that I could literally be watching that guy's precious moments wasting away, it angered me. It made me want to actually just uh, throw in the towel and start hitting one of the guards. I don't even know how long that thing's going on. You need something now, dude. You, know that, you know that, and they don't care. Give it about 20 more minutes, and it should be helping. What they say? You don't have appendicitis? They were just like, oh, I'll just give him a pill. Inmates are not people to these guards, these COs. To know that I was technically lumped into the category of being less than a human being, it hit me wrong. I'm gonna die here. I have an unprecedented type of store. I have the only tray store. It's probably the best money maker and it's the most sure thing. The more you actually act like you're a player, the more you're respected. And then I also have currency as a result. Ron's putting himself in a very dangerous place right now. If somebody owes him a debt and he doesn't collect on that debt, all the other inmates in that section are going to look at him as weak and he's going to become a target. Running a store, it's a good way to meet new people and gain a lot of influence. And having a little bit extra influence is never a bad thing. <laughs> I'm not gonna have to drag you to the butt to start bouncing your head off the door until they come in. Go to my room, bro. Come here. Come here. CJ, what the f? They pull Justin into a cell, and I could just see Justin waiting there for JoJo to come in and kick his ass. I felt sorry for the guy. He was being picked on just so somebody could experience some power. And that's not a reason to treat somebody like they are nothing. I've been sparing you, I really want to slaughter you. I really just want to put my hands on you. You're acting like you're not. I know that I'm supposed to stay in my own lane, but it's really hard to just sit and watch this. I really, really sympathize with Justin. So I give Justin three e 6 and a honey bun. And uh, he gave it to Jojo, who was angry at the moment. But it was still enough to get uh, him out of debt. Ricky's someone who needs to be on all of his medication because when he doesn't, he gets progressively worse. If I didn't pray to TV, wouldn't talk to him. But you pray for guidance in your prayer. So do you prefer for the TV to talk to you? Yeah, you get used to it. And then he gets to this point where he's very suspicious of me. What are you talking about? If you're just going to keep talking about it, you just going on the side of the road. The child is still a child. And he's genuinely whacked out. You're acting real different. Almost gone. I think you're a... I hope not. I really want to get out of here. I hope you don't get caught with you really can. I really want to just not end up here again. I you ain't wanna... changing, buddy. I heard the way you talking. You're getting worse. Am I? Yeah. You just hope you don't get caught. When they called my name, it was like a sigh of relief. And I just started grabbing my stuff and all the vultures started swarming. What do you have to give me? I call this, just like all this stuff started happening. Even Ricky asked me for commissary. At the end of the day, I really feel sorry for people like Ricky because he shouldn't be in a place like this. It's only making him worse. Pleasure meeting you. As I was walking out, I really felt for a lot of these guys. I'm about to experience freedom, and all I can think of is how some of these guys, may they may never get out of here. <laughs>